Remember when Sandine stole Polak's jock? I do. Why? <laughs> no reason. It just makes me happy. Hi, kids! Victorious puppies! Huh? This team is ruining my life! Why do I watch hockey? Stress really quickly! We can! Oh, and we oh, will! Oh, You want to chase Victor E. Green and bite him, but you also don't because you kind of respect the name? It's the mascot. Dallas has a mascot. Raise your hand if you knew that Matthews and Marner would work together. It's a mystery to you guys too? Well, you could have coached the Leafs for three and a half years. Victor E. Blue Leafs win! Five to three over the Dallas Stars! I got really excited and said Dallas. Yeah, you ever been to Dallas? That's actually their accent. All that y'all stuff. No, that's you stereotyping and it's wrong. It's wrong! Everyone there is walking around. Hi, welcome to Dallas, Texas. For those of you asking, it's good! How's about we talk about how the Leafs beat Dallas? I can see Tyler Sagan from my house and he's not wearing a shirt. Tyler! It's funny, I spent a decent chunk of last video criticizing the Nashville Predators because I was like, what happened to you? You used to be good and you didn't even look like you wanted to be playing that game. Like to the point where the Leafs won and a lot of fans and a lot of coverage was just like, yeah, so? This was a fantastic win and the Dallas Stars, oh the Dallas Stars, do you want to play them in a seven game series? Because it seems pretty unfun. Sure, regular season you look at them and you go, well they have a lot of trouble scoring even though they keep the puck out of their net and they have the best goalie in the league. Seriously, this season you can make an argument Ben Bishop's been the best goalie in the league. But come playoff time, the rules change a little? All of a sudden they become this big, mean, heavy team with a few lethal weapons and arguably the best goalie in the league and a good system. That is a cup contender. And if you do manage to beat them, you better sweep them because games five, six, and seven are gonna suck. Stop me if you've heard this before, they took the Blues to game seven double overtime. They're a pretty good squad, which makes the Leafs win even better. First and foremost, opening faceoff, Jason Spezza played in Dallas for a very long time and Sheldon Keefe putting him out there for the opening faceoff because why not? I mean, it's either have that bench lifting nice little warm and fuzzy moments or, you know, just scratch him and play Nick Shore. What are they gonna do? Stay tuned and find out. And then very shortly into the first period, Jason Spezza getting a video tribute from the Dallas Stars and and that's how long this guy's been around. He's been around long enough to get an emotional video tribute from two different teams. This was not a perfect game. You will rarely find a perfect game ever, especially in a January regular season game. Play players just don't care as much. They don't. This isn't just hockey, it's across all sports. But the fact of the matter is they're out of the playoffs looking in and they need to bloody win some games. Well, here's some Western Conference opponents. See how you do. This was a fantastic test for the Leafs. Listen. The Stars have a hard time scoring goals. You have a hard time keeping the puck out of your net. There's a good test. If you make them look like the 80s Oilers, it's a problem. The Dallas Stars are extraordinarily stingy and they're playing their starting goalie who's one of the best in the league and he's probably not happy that he wasn't invited to the All-Star game despite sporting a 927. There's a good test for you. Can you score on him? That'd be nice. The Stars have some big and heavy players. Can you take a bump and say, thank you, sir, may I have another, or even better, fight back? And another name from the not perfect but pretty darn good category in this one, Frederick Anderson. And I kept looking down at the numbers and I'm like, ah, he's floating around a 900 on the night and that's not exactly great. But it's the saves he made and how they made him. Freddie is at his best when he's not flying out of his net. When he starts getting out of position, he's no good. When he stays in there, he's able to do crazy athletic stuff like that big toe save he made on Kyle Turris against Nashville. And against the Dallas Stars, Freddie, when he's on, is one of the best in tight chaos in front of his own net scramblers in the league. And the Stars had a bunch of really good chances that they just couldn't bury because, well, the defense did collapse around Freddie as well, but he found the puck. It's not about winning perfectly. It's about winning which is perfect. A little over 12 minutes into the game, Hyman brings the puck into the Dallas Stars zone and he stopped and it starts to make its way to the blue line. Not perfect! And what happens? Tyson Berry doesn't fly back in a panic. He sees an opportunity, chips the puck to keep it in. It ends up on Mitch Marner's stick who puts it on Austin Matthews' stick. I would have done that too! Mitchell's smarty pants there in Dallas and Austin Matthews! What can I say? Really, what can I say at this point? 
God, I love you. That is his Demetrius Kavich of the season, number 36. Woo! Big selly from him. It's like he's on this goalless drought. Meanwhile, he scored last game, but it's an empty netter, and that does not count to Austin Matthews because he is a monster. Now, I, I really gotta, I gotta give credit uh, where credits due. You know, you know, Tyson Berry, sick on that play. Yeah, very good, good awareness and everything. Mitch Marner, excellent pass to Austin Matthews, best playmaker on the team. Austin Matthews, best goal scorer on the team. My goodness. But, how can we not give credit to the architect, the genius, that is Sheldon Keefe? Who would have thought, who would have possibly thought that playing the best playmaker the team has with the best goal scorer the team has would work? Who would have thought? Like, I am amazed he tried it so early in his coaching tenure. Like, come on, Sheldon, what's the rush? You don't want to wait three full seasons and two months to try that? Gosh! This is being a Leaf fan. This is the damage. This is how I celebrate a goal where Mitch Marner sets up Austin Matthews. You ready? Yeah! Austin Mike! If you have good players, play them together in a whole big bunch. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. And I gotta say, the huge Sally from Matthews, that's that's an ode to Ben Bishop. That It means something to goal scorers to score against Ben Bishop. He's been that good. Then about five minutes later, the Dallas Stars give the Leafs a taste of their own medicine. Gurianov intercepts a pass out of the Leafs zone, and he sees nothing, so he passes it back to John Klingberg. The Leafs defense, Jake Muzzin specifically, were already attacking and going forward. They're caught flat-footed. Alex Kerfoot's with them though, don't worry. Ah, oh. Kerfoot, like, I, I don't know if he lost an edge or something, but he like sort of fuddled a crossover and then Gurianov just has a clean path in on Freddy. Scores. Dennis Gurianov, the 12th overall pick in the 2015 draft. That's his 13th of the season. Stars tied up. Again, in 45 games, 13 goals, 6 assists, 19 points. Not the best, but you see He's got that uh-oh speed, and he's six foot three and 200 pounds, and if the stars surround him with good guys, wow, is he going to be a monster. Second period, about four and a half minutes into the frame. This won't show up on most of the highlight shows because you got to keep it tight, 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 but this all starts with a wicked stretch pass from Travis Dermott all the way to center ice. Just woo, a scorcher up to Austin Matthews. No look, pretty much tap to Mitch Marner. Once again, who could have possibly thought playing them together? God, I'm so mad. And then Mitch Marner with Zach Hyman crashing the net. Tell me if this is your experience, Lee fans, watching the game. So often I'll see the puck either near Marner or on his stick, and I'll see an option for him, but I'll go, no, nah, how is he gonna? He couldn't possibly. And then sure enough, he practically no look backhand flings the thing to Zach Hyman right onto his tape. His tape that has like teeth marks on it. Ah, he's a hungry dog. It's not tape, it's rawhide. Ah. And when he scores, he gets one of those greenies. It's good for your teeth. It's a nice little treat. And so he bags it, and here's your treat. Zachary on the attackery, and the Leafs regain the lead. Hey, do you want to soil yourself? Okay, can, I, can I tell you something? That was Zach Hyman's 14th goal of the season. Reminder, he was recovering from surgery heading into this season and missed a fair chunk of time. His 14th goal in 32 games. Do you know what pace that is over 82 games? That much. 35.8? So 36? Because if you don't round up, he'll actually bite you. Put it this way, Zach Hyman has 14 goals and 10 assists for 24 points in 32 games. Jamie Benn has 14 goals, 11 assists for 25 points in 50. I'm not telling you that to give Jamie Benn a tongue lashing. I merely have Zach Hyman on the brain. So, Kervin Tavares, Nylander. Sick, obviously. Hyman, Matthews, Marner. Disgust. But we got this kind of new look, new fangled third line. Uh, Andreas Janssen hasn't really played in the third line at all for the past year or so. Then you got Pierre Engvall playing center in the NHL, and you have Kasperi Kapanen down there as well. I like the line on paper, but it needs to work still. Andreas Janssen shaking off the cobwebs, Kasperi Kapanen left last game with an injury, and Engvall hasn't really played center at the NHL level. On this goal, none of them scored, but it was their doing. Dallas Stars with the puck behind the net. Pierre Engvall crashing, taking away time and space. Causes a turnover, Andreas Janssen, bing, right off the post. There's a rebound, and if it didn't hop over Kasperi Kapanen's stick, he could have banged that in himself. Instead, bah! Tyson with the berry bomb!
bomb, and it's a 3-1 Leafs lead. That now gives Tyson Berry five goals and 30 points in 51 games. I hate to beat a dead horse, but he had no goals in like a 16-game pointless streak or something like that under Babcock. Tyson Berry is certainly not perfect, but he was advertised as the right-handed Jake Gardner, which sounded exactly like what this team needed at the time. Here he is! Rejoice. Listen, he drives me nuts too. I saw that giveaway against Nashville. What's wrong with him? But I ranted about this on the podcast. You're telling me, so let's say that trade never happens. You're telling me the least we're going to head into the season with what? On the right. CC Hall, who played 11 games last year. He was not a hockey player. He was a hockey practicer. And... Lily Grin, who may or may not even be ready, and certainly wasn't ready at the beginning of the season. Or do you want this guy who is good at hockey when you tell him to do the things he's been doing since he was drafted in 2009? No, I think I'm gonna make him into a shorter Roman Polak. I think you're fired. Then with about a minute to play in the second period, a play I didn't love. Radic Foxa comes in on Rasmus Sandin, Sandin whacks it away. Great, and then when they race for the puck, Foxa just, mm, just mushes him right in the face and he gets possession as a result. Now, it wasn't the most egregious thing. I'm not saying that's got to be roughing. It is a, it's a face push. But it affected possession on this play. And if you see a trip behind the play, it's not always going to get called. But if it affects who gets the puck, it is. And then after that, everything that happens is not Rasmus Sandin's fault. Kasperi Kapanen just kind of standing there. Austin Matthews not being terribly useful in the slot. And Cody Ceci... What, what is it you would say you do here on this play? He's just kind of looking. It's just like front row seats, except he can actually see stuff. Did you see that poor lady behind Rick Bonus? Every time there was a goal scorer, she would look up and go, What happened? Sucks! You pay all that money, you're just staring at the back of a suit? Anyway, Foxhead gets it over to Radulov, who, I don't know if you know this, but he swears in Russian every time he scores. Their F word starts with a B, do the lip reading, he says it every time, and the stars are within one, heading into the third. That's a play where it's easy to blame it on Cody CC, and he is is partially at fault, but like the whole team fell asleep. And that's the type of attention to detail, or lack thereof, that they need to get out of their system before April, if they're gonna have a shot at even playing deep into April. Now, third period, another play similar to the Dermot pass that led to the Hyman goal, Jake Muzzin. The Stars flip it through the neutral zone. He jumps up and grabs it out of the air like a cat. Like a cat. Sometimes I have sentences that are so long I run out of air. Dishes it to Tavares, who takes it into the zone. And struggling John Tavares doesn't get an assist on this one, but he is a key part of it all. To Kerfa, to Muzzin at the point, blam! And this is just the kind of month and a half or so that Nylander is having. He's wide open in front kicks the puck to his stick, and Bishop reads it the whole way, but Nylander just finds a way to curl it around his glove. Goal. Again. Nylander scored in five straight games for the second time this season, and the Leafs are up 4-2. Nylander on pace for 38 goals. Who do you think you are, Zach Hyman? But I still remember earlier in the season being like, oh, hey, see, Nylander's on pace for 60 points, and he's making the kind of money that a 60-point getter gets. But now the guy's on pace for 74, and for the amount of money he makes, oh, we don't need to dig up this conversation again. He's having a great season. It's wonderful. And Jake Muzzin, a defense defenseman who actually takes a slap shot from the point. Hello. Now just under 14 to play. Jan Mark is about to beat the Leafs clean, but Alex Kerfoot, Alexander Kerfoot, with an amazing back check. Controlled, great, everything's fine. But then you see guys like Tavares is coming into the screen. All the Leafs are coming back in support, but they got way overzealous with it, way too deep. They're not identifying that Kerfoot, a forward, is way too deep. And if Jan Mark is able to work it back to the point, the Leafs are screwed. Oh, he does, and there's no gap control, no challenge at all. And Haskinen's able to rip it on net and there's no way Freddie even sees it. You even see his reaction to the goal. It was another defensive mess and on top of that the goalie screamed what's he gonna do and now the stars are back within one. Tough one for the Tavares line. People are talking about his lack of production or whatever. I'm not concerned about that at all. This one annoyed me way more but that line was way deep into their shift and Nylander was the only guy who got off to change. You saw Zach Hyman there in that shot. You see me point at my phone like you can see it. I, I can't show you the footage. I'm not allowed. I'm sorry. Stars doing their utmost to tie it. Tyler Second with a face-off in the leave zone. 9.5 seconds left. That is plenty of time to score a goal. And Andreas Janssen with the speed flicks it loose. He's got a breakaway. Kasperi Kapanen says, I'm here. <laughs> Just kidding. No, but for real. Janssen buries it, and that's nice because I thought that might have been his best game since coming back from injury. Leafs win it. Ice it. 5-3.
questions. Uh, this isn't a question, but I saw a lot of people talking about it. Cody CC gets the game ball. Uh, Marner said he played a great defensive game, blocking a lot of shots. PK was huge for us, and that six on five there at the end, I think he was on for that whole minute and a half or whatever it was, and did a great job keeping them out of the middle. Hashtag Bell Let's Talk. That was yesterday too. You know what's funny? So a lot of people were talking about, oh, Zach Hyman, Zach Hyman. He was all over the place in this game. And he was getting in Ben Bishop's kitchen, which he absolutely was. He might have been the best player on the ice. But I'm watching Cody Cece. And there was one moment in the offensive zone where the puck ends up at his feet. And he's just panicking with his stick. And I'm like, what can we do to get him some confidence? Like Tyson Berry, like it was Sheldon Keefe's mission the second he became head coach. All right, we got a lot of stuff to fix. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get Barry a damn goal. I really like giving CeCe the game ball in this one. And yes, he wore the goat horns on one of those goals, I thought. But he gave an effort. Like he tried really hard. He was blocking lots of shots. And by Cody CeCe standards, I suppose... That was a great game, and there have been a lot of moments this season where he has been out with the other team having the extra man or on the penalty kill, and the guy is sacrificing his body. There's nothing Cody CC can do to wake up tomorrow morning and be Nicholas Lidstrom. All he can do is go out there and try his best. And, you know, I've been frustrated with the guy, but you really cannot say he does not try. So gritty effort, gritty game. I hope this gives him confidence. Good on Cody Cece. Do you got a feel for Corey Perry? Says Pedro. <laughs> yeah, man, the Dallas Stars, as good as I thought they looked, uh, I didn't notice Corey Perry at all, and I didn't notice Joe Pavelski at all. The camera panned to him a couple times, and I'm like, oh. Let me tell you something. No. You do not got to feel for Corey Perry. You do not have to feel bad for him and his struggles or anything. And let me tell you why. Corey Perry did not spend the entire career that he's had so far being an absolute S disturber wanting us to feel bad for him. The greatest compliment I could possibly pay Corey Perry is saying, no, I don't feel bad for you because I don't like you. I didn't like him before. I don't like him now. I don't see myself liking him in the future. That is the greatest compliment I can give a guy who won the Hart Trophy. We're not going to get to the end of Brad Marchand's career and have him go, gosh, I just wish more people felt bad for me. No. Corey Perry, <laughs> good for him. That's the biggest compliment I can give him. It's like if a Stars fan went, I don't like Zach Hyman in the way he played, and he would go, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Thank you. How are you feeling about Sandine now that we've gotten a fair chance to see his potential? I tweeted this last night. Something Rasmus Sandin can do playing in the AHL is play a lot and learn a lot. Something Rasmus Sandin cannot do in the AHL is play against Jamie Benn. And that kid got smacked by Jamie Benn and didn't even buckle at the knees at all. Kept control of the puck and passed it out for a productive little play. I don't think players want to get hit. Getting hit sucks. Getting hit by Jamie Benn really sucks. Rasmus Sandin, 19 year old still pretty sure undeterred, unbothered. He had that giveaway at the blue line and he makes up for it. He just uses his body. Like this guy, does someone tell Rasmus Sandin how big he is? He doesn't play his size at all and he's gonna grow. And that's not even mentioning all the skill he has and how he pretty much attacked the net and danced Roman Polak. Treating Roman Polak like he works at the Morningside Cineplex. Number 38 on your right. God, I missed that guy. Put it this way. I think we can be confident this is the worst Rasmus Sandin will ever look. It's a scary thought, eh? How are you? Is the stress of the team getting to you? I think you've earned a cookie. Man, I don't need an occasion to enjoy a cookie, but n now that you've asked, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm a happy guy. H haven't you seen my videos? I'm happy. Why are there so many Leaf fans in Texas? Several times a chant of Go Leaves Go broke out during the game and after. I have never felt so threatened and offended in my own arena before. Well, Brianna McCurley, Leaf fans are the most ridiculous, most loyal fan base in the sport. They have to be, on account of they haven't won anything since forever, and they show up everywhere. And another thing that I'm just making up, I don't even know if it's true, I think a lot of people here, like, move because it's so freaking expensive. Or they go, dude, it's almost February and it kind of sucks, you want to go to Texas? Yeah, sure, I'll go to Texas with the Leafs playing. Ah! I don't know why, man. It's just like you. We just like hockey. And last but not least, why couldn't y'all let the Sturs win? Listen, it was a great game against the Sturs. It's a doggy dog league. 
I mean, the Leafs need the points. The Sutters need the points. The Sutters are a good team, like I mentioned. And honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if the Sutters played into June. Hats off to the Sutters, but big win for the Leafs over the Sutters. That jersey is butt. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends that the Leafs beat the Sutters.